Hiya. Today, very honoured to be uh, with Patrick Doyle in your creative crib. Thank you. Do you want to show us about? Yes, OK. Uh, do follow me. I, <laughs> this is the central corridor. I, I find this building's a bit like, like those um, working uh, offices in Los Angeles studio. Uh, j just by coincidence, I happen to inherit this. Uh, do follow me. And it's in uh, Shep we're in Shepparton, aren't we? We're in Shepparton Film Studios, and um, this, this setup has my main office here and the programmers in there. If you just bring the camera around, you'll see the pro programmers in that office. Um, and on the other side of the corridor that we've just come in from, uh, there are three more offices for the editor, um, just for various other, other, just other, other mixing uh, um, offices. And one of them also doubles as a sort of semi-kitchen. So it's, a, it's really a glorified garage, really. It's a garage <laughs> shape. Um, I've been here for about... over. Well, I've been here since, in Shepparton for since 1989. Wow. Okay. Um, this building, maybe 20 years. Wow. And um, so you, you work here. What's the microphone for, Patrick? Well, the microphone is um, because um, the programmers, if you swing the camera around here, the programmers up there. So rather than shouting at each other, we just talk into the mic all the time. And um, so we can talk quietly without having to, to shout. And when music's playing, I can also give instructions as to when, how to change levels or try to ideas. I'll say, oh, quick, quick, put up some piano, whatever, while this is playing. And um, so it just saves you stopping and saying, what did I say? Repeating yourself. It's, it's terrific. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. You can hear it. Um, so, um, and then, and then with the, this is my, um, my napping couch. When I'm working, I'm very lucky. I mean, the only thing I have with, in common with Margaret Thatcher and this is the only thing in common with Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> is that I, and Winston Churchill for that matter, um, is, uh, is I can sleep, I can just put my head down for four minutes and uh, that's, I can go on all night. And then, and you find the, the ideas come a little, it just clarifies the head, Well, but, it? Uh, well when I'm working, it's so intense. I'm here, I'm here early, I'm here normally about 8.30. I'm quite, quite a disciplined composer. I'm in at half past eight at the latest and I leave... Uh, about maybe about six, posh up to seven, and um, we have a, a half an hour break, really. Uh, sometimes it's an hour, but I will keep working. I don't really have a break at all from half past eight right through to then. It's quite intense. So rather than take a, a, a nap, um, I'll, I'll be, in fact, I can sit at the chair there, and whoever's working can look up, and suddenly I'll put my head down for four minutes, listen four minutes, and I'm totally refreshed. I could be, a, I could do an all-nighter after that, if, right. if necessary. So right. I'm very, very fortunate that um, cat napping is, is... And the piano, is this initial ideas? Do, do, well, do... I, always, I always sit down, I always sit at the piano, and this is, um, um, this is, this is a, 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 a film, um, um, it's coming along the road. I can't really play anything just now, but... Um, uh, but that's uh, literally there's no chords on it yet. It's just I've got the chords in my head. But I, I'll I will grab a piece of manuscript like in the old days. And I'll just sit down and you know, and I'll just. Um, I mean, this is this is this is set up for the show, as it were. Right. Um, <laughs> this is here. We discuss this one. Do we leave this here? Yeah, leave it here. That's been sitting there for days and days and days. Um, and the the other more um, extended version of this with harmonies and everything else. I think it's in the house somewhere. Right, right. Um, and this, this probably was lying there. Um, but I, I will certainly sit down and work out um, uh, the main theme. And, uh, and very often what I'll do is I'll, I'll sit down and work out if it's, obviously, if it's, if it's, that the, if it's if I go as far as a four part harmony, sure. I'll just write all the four parts out here and then literally just give instructions um, to, to, to Will or whoever's here. Uh, and I'll just set it out for strings and then I'll start doubling or, or whatever. Or maybe I'll sit down with a main theme and, and work. If it, just if, if the theme was this, I'm just making this out now. Right, that's just improvised. So uh, rather than catch, catch that, I don't panic anymore about, oh, what was that idea? Forget it. 
I'm going to sit down here. Your, se your second idea is always better than your first, I think. Right. I think. I, 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 I don't panic anymore. But, oh, what was that? Oh, I forget. I'll write another one. Um, <laughs> because that's the truth. Uh, um, fortunately, I've got a reasonable facility for sitting down. I've always been able to do that. And send, I used to send up film music. I used to play a whole tone scale when I was at the Royal Scottish Academy. Long before I had designed and been a, a writer. Um, but So that's what I do. Um, I'll come up with the, the tune, whatever it is, or <laughs> the idea. Not The main theme, yes, yeah. in terms of developing it after that, um, which is really the, the, the... which is your, your, important, your important skill uh, as a... the most important skill as a, as a composer is to be able to develop your theme. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose... It, we call it brass band, air variation. I come from a brass band background too. And air variation, uh, years and years as a teenager, I listened to brass band competitions and, and hearing how, uh, you know, a melody, how these brass band virtuosos, I used to accompany my great friend who was a euphonium virtuoso and won the Scottish Junior Championships. And um, the Carol de Venice, you know, all that kind of business. And I learned about I learned a lot from all these players playing all these these um, um, uh, all these famous pieces by Berlioz or whatever, um, and learning how they varied them, oh, as well as studying at school. So I think the key technique that, that a composer needs is that is to take that melody. If you take the theme from Thor, dum pi ba ba di, slightly folky. A Norwegian thing which I wrote, <laughs> and um, once you've got that, you, you can, you've got to be able to throw that everywhere. Sure. You know, a good tune, as you know, is this, it can be my early, my one of my earliest memories of uh, being taught uh, by this teacher. He said, you know, a melody should stand on its own, played slowly, fast. It should be able to take high. any yeah. high low, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the skill. So it sounds like quite a fluid process. Yes. You know, working with, 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 with your, your assistant. Yeah. Now, you and I worked a while ago. Uh, the first thing, yes, it was um, uh, Bridget Jones. Was it Bridget Jones? Bridget Jones. Yeah. And in those days, you were, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it was like a Korg wave station. Oh, God. With a string patch. And then you had these short form scores that you were you were writing on these little yes, books be before 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 computers come along uh, in the modern sense in logic <laughs> excuse me i'm just going over for, for a chess thing uh, before logic came along um, i think this was pre that was pre um uh it was pre harry potter i think that's what it was i'm not sure if nanometer fee became before harry potter no, it, was it was a while was, back. It was after but i had to, i had to, by harry potter i was that was a crossover stage um i bought all the gear uh and the early computers and stuff that i used and they sat in the corner for nine months this is not uncommon <laughs> really in the box <laughs> sat in the corner going Come on, open me! I'm no, not deflating. Uh, I'm leaving. I'd have to leave my world of of, of pencil and paper. Um, I would I would write <laughs> on four staves. Well, sometimes eight staves. Um, but uh, it was the old um, uh, oh, what was it? The uh, how would you call it? Um, Q. Yes, Q, I remember that. Not yeah. Q base Q. So you, I remember you used to spot a film with. In queue, didn't it? And it, it was amazing how well it worked. Yeah, but it, it, my very first film, Henry V, I had to do it by hand. It was a nightmare. And someone gave me the uh, Carl Knudsen book, who was an editor. And this is a hugely thick book, and uh, it looks like logarithms, you know, and math was not my strongest subject at school. But I had to learn, you know, you, you had to work out the 10p, um, and uh, you had to work out how many. Uh, seconds at that time period, feet of film passed through these logarithms, and then you would have to mark your score by hand. And, I'd, and I would map it out and bar the whole cue before you started. You could work out all your hit points, and then you had to write, write Fill in, there. in the old way and, and write in four staves. Um, so I worked that way for, <clears throat> you know, if you look at um, uh, uh, Congo scores or David Rax's scores. I was really, I suppose, at the very, very last, the tail end of all that 
that old school. I was the last dying ember of that world. Yeah. And I thought this was ahead of me. And to be honest, I could never have survived if I'd worked in that old way. It's exhausting, yeah. uh, really exhausting. Um, because it's sort of alpha state that you get into, it, it becomes really, really exhausting. But also, I guess you've got the, the the technologies of the different departments start rubbing up against each other, you know, yeah. because of what's happened with Avid and then being yeah. able to re-edit and re-edit and re-edit. Well, there just... was no there was no future in that. I mean, on Frankenstein, um, it, there were so many changes in Frankenstein because the whole Avid thing started, and mm -hmm. and and I was avalanched. It was a tsunami every single day. It was absolutely exhausting doing this doing these changes by hand. Um, it's, it's too complicated to actually explain how difficult it is. I, I, I still I bring in I bring in the, the books that I used to, well all these thick thick scores um, that I did by hand. The, you know my crew can't believe it. They just look at me as if I'm a lunatic. Um, I don't know how I did it uh, and survived for so long. But the minute that I got logic. Um, I could I could say double it or call this call that you know you know double the flute with that uh, uh, give me some horns it, so it didn't actually impact it didn't it sort of diminish the I, I feel the standard of my work or uh, it wasn't sort of instant gratification mm -hmm. that's a nice sound and it works because everything works to a degree against the picture as, as to as to how well it works in, in terms of the arc of an entire score is a different matter. Um, but it meant, quite frankly, that instead of me having to take a two-week holiday, sometimes on my own, after a film by hand like that, um, that I could go from project to project with relative ease by comparison because all that stress and yeah. technical stuff um, <clears throat> and being able to play it in something and have it instantly captured you know, before <clears throat> you know, you'd write something. Um, okay, you'd write your theme. You would, you would then you would you would consolidate it and, and write it down. But then when you were working on it by hand, you'd all these inner parts. There's a lot of physical work. Um, so all that I could just because I had a good piano facility, so I could just play it in, and you know, the programmer um, then you know bangs it into shape. But you, but it's a strange thing because I do all the orchestrating now. Um, Computers have made it easier, but doubled your workload. Yes. I'm orchestrating the whole thing, that's it. Because I virtually have to demo the entire movie and then they screen the movie with my work. So yeah. thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in a sense, I sort of slightly res resisted going along the path of using samples and everything else. But in fact, I've been doing it in a crude way, as you describe with the Korg string pad. Yeah. That was one step near the orchestra in the old days, rather than the piano. Yeah. They got a sense of what an Sustain. orchestra would sound like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. This, this general, I remember demonstrating um, the Sir Christopher this speech uh, music uh, to Ken Branner on an old Korg synth. And he was very moved by it, because <clears throat> he, could, he could make the leap, he could hear what an orchestra would sound like. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, it was, in the old days it was, it was tough. Um, and you didn't, there's sometimes I have, I sit down, I'll sit down and say, you know, I want to thrash this out in the old days at the piano. Mm -hmm. I remember in Harry Potter, I had the very last cue of Potter and the death of Ced Cedric, uh, is the character's name. Um, I said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and write this um, at the piano here. Um, and because uh, it's, it, it just, it just needed, some extra sleeves rolled up. Gotcha. I don't know why. Um, but I remember at the end of the day, I wrote those two cues, all fully orchestrated. Um, but uh, not in four lines, I said fully orchestrated. Yeah. And I come out after a day's work and I, and I just was exhausted. My head was it, as if someone had filled it with quick drying cement. Yeah. It was so difficult. I thought, I can't do that anymore. Right. I can't do that anymore. I, I'm, that, is, that takes a man of 25. I just can't sustain that. I need these computers, thank God, to do that. To do that all the time is just ridiculous. Right. Uh, I remember actually on Bridget Jones, you actually rewriting the climax in a 15 minute break on that lovely piano. I can't it? remember that. Yeah, yeah, it was just astonishing to watch. That, uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, in those days, I remember, uh, uh, in, quite recently, in Nims Island, you know, one of the cues is, I just changed it from a, a major key to a minor key. Um, that was, it, it seems quite simple, but on the floor with an orchestra in there, it's not that easy. And also, uh, uh, in the same film, I would literally hear a horn melody and run up and give it to the horn player. That, that's why these session people are amazing. No drama, you know, no, no, no diva-ness about it. He just said, great, I sang it to him and, and I quickly wrote it on a stave um, and ran back to the podium, <coughs> um, gave some instructions to James, James who was conducting at the time. Um, and we were up and running and, everyone, and I looked in the booth and they're all chatting away and having a coffee. And I'm like... <laughs> all going, the internal yeah, panic. Sounds great, sounds lo lovely. <laughs> and they, and they go, oh, that, that's, that's the way we wanted it. I thought, oh my God, they have no concept. Um, and that's, I mean, I remember I was told by as someone, you, you will have to rewrite a cue on the stand. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I thought, oh, too ridiculous. Um, but fortunately, fortunately, um, uh, you know, as you get older, and I'm a lot older, obviously, I'm now in my early 60s, um, you garnish a lot of experience. And I, I tell younger uh, composers not to panic because the more you do, the more, listen, the faster you become, mm -hmm. really. And you, you and it's the sort of panic isn't as great because you know, oh, that works, that works, that works. Yep. You just pull on a thousand experiences. You Absolutely. know that chord and you know, you, you, this Hamill work or that melody. You know, even Harry Potter, there was huge rewrites going on. Um, but you just, you just go, okay, I'll take a Thatcher nap and um, <laughs> have four minutes and off we go. <laughs> you know, I can, and once I'm on a job, I have boundless energy boundless energy, I can go from, from completely kind of, uh, uh, you know, as if I'm, you would think I was drug driven, to complete lethargy. I can go from one extreme to the other. Right. The minute I'm on, I'm on. I don't know what yeah. it is. Um, maybe most people are the same. I don't know. I can only talk from my own personal experience. But the change to using uh, samples now has transformed my life. Thank God. No. We, we have the same agents, so we bump into each other from, yeah. from time to time, having worked right, together yeah. as well. And often I think we enjoy kind of stories from the front line, because yeah. there are some tricky buggers out there. Yes. And all that. Now, you told me something that I found really inspiring, and I, I mentioned uh, this to a composer of dealing with difficult situations, and this other composer said, well, referring to themselves. So I, I was trying to prepare this, this question on the plane and there's no quick way to, to ask it, so I do yeah. apologise. Right. But this composer said, what you need to have, actually, for those tricky experiences is really good experiences. It's because it's from them that you can actually gauge, no, this is a bad experience and yes. deal with it better. Yeah. Now, you have the most phenomenal relationship with Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. Do you feel that having that benchmark of a relationship with a director and working with, I think, a director of his yeah. uh, quality yeah. provides you with the ability to go, no, hang on a minute, this, this isn't right, the way this is, is going? You can um, you know, object to a certain atmosphere or a certain modus operandi uh, because... And, and, and the people... One doesn't have to say anything, but your experience comes out. So people, you know, they bring strong people on board like myself, um, or they work with underlings. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, you know, if you're purely a servant as opposed to providing a service, mm -hmm. um, and which you are as a composer and, and, a, and you're a collaborative service, um, then it's not for you. Mm -hmm. um, Ken Branagh will want people to 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 challenge him, uh, and that's a wrong word, really. not challenge, but to actually contribute in a strong way. That's it. Um, but to to say, but I, I, I would never dream uh, of um, with Robert Altman or De Palma or him, any of these people I've worked in the past, any director, of of giving my tuppence worth, unless I felt that a, a respectful amount of time had had elapsed. I felt that maybe this part of the film wasn't sort of ringing true with me or musically I couldn't really sort of do my job um, to serve it well. And then I'll speak up mm -hmm. um, and I'll say, you know, diplomatically, of course, um, uh, I feel this is this is. And, uh, and usually filmmakers say, really? Because you've waited for your moment. Mm -hmm. You haven't gone in there, allow them to do their thing. Allow the whole crazy process. Uh, once it starts to settle, you've got to 
read the room, read the job. Once they start to check, you think, well, no, I don't like that. If everyone's buying that, I'll buy all that and all that and all that, but I don't buy that. So I'll leave it another week. It's just patience. Yes, I remember you telling me a story about a meeting that wasn't going very well, and you just explained to the director that you didn't think the meeting was going very well. And no, it seemed like so obvious to me, yeah. but I'd never thought of that. Well, well uh, uh, the, the director um, unfortunately had a, a meltdown and started to beat his brow with the back of his hands. Oh, jeepers. Um, and uh, this was clearly so there was something more to this <laughs> than met the eye. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was, you know, but there's two ways you can deal with that. Um, um, I hate to see it at a certain age. Um, you either buy into that and, and, and enter their reality or you bring them back into your world, the world of sanity, relative sanity in my case. Um, so maybe, I don't know, 25 years ago, I would have sort of been sucked into the vortex of this um, Lack of... They call it pathology, don't they? Yeah, it is pathology. Yeah. It's patho it was pathological behaviour, you know. So I, 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 I immediately said, whoa, um, this is clearly... A, 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 I mean, the word that was used was, this is very... This is so disappointing, was the word used, in terms of having just heard my music. You know, yeah, thoughts through your head, you think, well, I'm sorry. Um, this person didn't even realise the basis of the process. This was just... Um, <clears throat> Michael came in, God rest him, was more blunt about it at one point. He was never show an idiot unfinished work. This person was not an idiot. Most pe people are not idiots uh, if they've had a career. In it. But really, the pro uh, one of the producers said at the time, you know, in, in my defence to, to the director, you've got to understand the process. This is part of the process. He does something, you give comments, he changes it, and we move on. That's, but that's what happens in theatre, that's what happens anywhere. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so I said to this person, I said, um, this is clearly a very bad meeting. <laughs> I love it. As opposed to, oh, it's a great meeting. No, this is a clearly a very bad meeting. And of course, there's not a lot you can say to that. I thought, <laughs> well, I don't want any elephants in the room. I hate elephants in the room. Get rid of them immediately uh, because I, it's a wonderful American expression about living in their reality. I never live in their reality unless the reality is real, mm -hmm. unless it's productive. Um, this was a un very highly unusual situation, but it could have been uh, very, very st stressful. As it was, it was stressful um, to the extent that um, it's unpleasant when a person is, um, through his frustration, um, he's... He's, what he's doing is he's kicking the child or kicking the dog or kicking the... It's bullying. You don't need to bully people no. to get the best out of them. No. And I always think, you know, often I've been treated very badly over the years, and I often think you wouldn't treat your actors like this because no. they'd shut themselves in the, in the, in the trailer. That's, that's right. Or you'd get a very bad performance out that's of right. them. That's right. It's, 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 it's that thing of... <clears throat> it's that thing of... You know, it's, it's, it's really bullying. I mean, you can't really sort of describe it in any other way. And... Um, so, so people employ people who are, are malleable or, or, or weak or whatever, and this, they won't employ certain other, uh, other writers or, art, uh, or cameramen or whatever artists um, because they're, 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 they're probably too strong. But I employ people, um, uh, I hate to employ, I, I, I like to work with people um, who are strong, who will challenge me. And good directors, good filmmakers want up, they want your feedback. It's vital because they realise that you have a lot of experience. I mean, you're, t you're talking about, I've done I don't know, 52 pitches or something, I don't know, something like that. Um, but these are all high, most of high octane uh, experiences. Um, and working with someone like, like Ken Branagh, he's demanding. He's not difficult. That's the last thing he is. He's very demanding because his standards are so high that you, one, for example, play, a, 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 it's the same with Mike Newell. You, you play a piece and they say, great, um, what else you got? Mm -hmm. Great, no, uh, there's no, um, they'll say, terrific, uh, what else you got? They, they don't spend, oh my God, genius, genius, that's all you want. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of Araboy going on uh, in the world at uh, the best of times, as they say in America. 
you know, and I thought, what, when I first I heard that Araboy, um, it's important. People need um, uh, 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 not reassurance, but they need validated. Yeah. Um, but, but someone said to me, and it's, it's a great uh, uh, expression, people are buying confidence. Mm -hmm. They're buying confidence. They want you to do that job. They've hired you because you're experienced. Therefore, with that confidence comes a certain degree of of expertise and um, and also questioning. You, you will question things. Um, on to the kind of final thing I wanted to, to touch on is, is over the years you've employed thousands of musicians or musicians out. Yes, this is uh, clearly something that you you is an enjoyable part of the process for yes, you. Yes, yeah. And um, I was going to touch on, um, I'm we're going to talk to, is it Chris Stout, isn't it, who you worked with on Brave, yes, the yes. violinist. Uh, do you want to mention how you work with, uh, say, the non-classical uh, musicians, of which I imagine we call them specialist yes. musicians? You've, uh, you've done that over the years, and how do you find that? Do you also find your vocal kind of past helps work, working what with... What do you mean by vocal past? I, I believe oh, you by, by singing back Yes, right? absolutely, yeah, in yeah. the sense of how you interact with... Um, well, I'm a lyrical writer, and because I was brought up in a household um, that, full of singers, and my father's alive, it's still alive, Although his mind's gone, but um, he looks great and he's healthy. Um, wonderful tenor and still sings beautifully. He's 95 now, 96 nearly. So I was brought up listening to great melodies, phenomenal melodies, um, and, uh, and inter intertwined with a, a very, very strong Celtic um, a, a, a upbringing. My father sang lots of burn songs, also Irish songs, Irish parlour songs. Chris gave you something, as I said to him, it was in, it's in his DNA, and I really believe this, um, that we all have, whether you're an architect or a joiner or you're a composer, no matter what, you are, hand, you are of course, the, a great survivor of the human race because you're, 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 your genetic family are, are still reproducing. So you've gone through pestilence, war, God knows whatever else, and all your DNA is in there, including your music, if you're a, a composer. Um, and when he plays that fiddle, you can give him a phrase. And I feel that, at Simple Wee Tune, I feel it, right in my, my very soul, I can see, and it sounds cliched, I can see Scottish hills and streams and peat and burns, you know, beech trees, moss, things that I, when my smells of my youth, um, uh, you know, and badly polluted buns, you know, from the industrial part of the world. It wasn't all. But I saw great beauty in the sea, the beach was very near. It's very near no matter where you are in Scotland, it's easy to get to a beach. Um, so all of that in your background and everything else. And when he played that tune um, in Brave, this, uh, this particular melody, um, nobody, even Heifetz, couldn't infuse that with that centuries and millennium of DNA. It just, and I remember Chris when Tan turned around, and he wasn't being early about it, Chris, at all. He's not early at all. He just, my God, that is unbelievable. That phrase, just a simple phrase, was the most informed thing. It was as powerful as a Prokofiev, the Prokofiev first violin concerto. Mm -hmm. And when he came out of the booth, the entire orchestra all tapped. Oh. And I'm not joking, they all tapped, that wonderful sound. Because we all heard him through the cans in the room, and he was so nervous. Really? Oh, he was so nervous. Um, I'm sure he'll tell you this. He was so nervous. I said, "You don't. You got in there. You're not even nervous. You just wait till they hear you." <laughs> yeah. And I remember Matthew, the the flautist, um, and 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 uh, he played the um, all the different various whistles, <clears throat> and a whole bank of them in different keys. Because it, there's so many transpositions going on in the picture, as you know, that's what I do. I just them. Although a lot of us, a lot of us, was in D or B flat for the, you know, for the, uh, the bagpipes, etc. You had to work out your modulations because they, they, they only play in certain keys. But with Matthew, he started to play, and um, people weren't getting it, you know, and, and I wasn't getting it either. And uh, he looks older these years, so if he sees it, it doesn't matter. If he sees it, it's all. A real compliment to him, and, uh, and I will use him again and again. It's brilliant. And um, so, after about three takes, uh, uh, it's, and, and the point of the story is how to <coughs> deal with these 
these um, folk musicians. Yeah. Now, he's a reader, but doesn't read me as quick as the, the guys that you know. But nevertheless, it comes from that world of improvisation and folk and feel um, in, in their DNA. So I, so I went out to him. <clears throat> I, I found out that he was actually 21. He looks a lot older than his years. I thought, this is a young guy. So his, his soul is old, but this is a new studio in London and he's come down from Scotland, he'd never been in London before. It was overwhelming. So your job is to make sure you get the best work out of this person. I thought, oh my God, I was just a flashback moving from another culture, to, which is moving from Scotland to England. Because you you know, it's, it's, it's like Mars to Venus. Completely. People think the only thing is that a form of English connects you. It's a completely different change. So he's landing in the middle of London, he's in this big film, it's overwhelming. So I said to him, Matthew, right, you have got to this stage, I gave him a little, the same sort of talk I'm saying now about his, about his background, his DNA, um, you, when you, that opening, that high piercing uh, flute sound, that's, that, imagine the most beautiful golden eagle up there in the Highlands flying, flying over a mountain, and you are in this, this bird is you, right? Because you are the last in line to gazillions of, you know, from Genghis Khan, right through all the, he went up to the Scandinavia, he conquered Scandinavia, the Vikings then came from him. We, all of us are, are, are children of Genghis Khan. People don't realize that, you know. Right through to now, right? Grab it. I want you on the cusp of that instrument, all, almost about to kind of crack the windows here. It should be screaming the cry of an ancient Scot, which you are, right? You're an ancient Scot. Um, it's in your blood, all your ancestors. Um, and, and I'm not joking, you've been there, the whole studio set up. We, we, we were through the whole, all those cues again, and he flew like that eagle, and it was amazing. And all that whole score, you hear it, from the very, very opening, that piercing sound, that was a conversation that took place. And, you, you can go two directions in a studio, you can ruin someone's chances forever, or you can grab their potential, as I've watched Ken Brown do with actors, great directors do with actors, um, say, accenting the positive. Well, that's good advice, I think. Okay, I Fantastic. Hope, I hope that's absolutely brilliant, Patrick. I, Thank I, you so much. I hope so. That's great stuff.